All right, guys, welcome back to Schmatz Outdoors. Uh, today we're going to go through how I build my fox stretchers and then I'm actually modifying the ones I already had. Uh, I'm reshaping the head area of them. Um, I felt like in the past the head area on my stretchers were a bit too wide. Uh, and I'm going to show you a little bit what I'm talking about and I'm going to show you the shape that I'm making them uh, At the end of the video here. I'm going to have actual measurements You know probably every half an inch down to maybe like six inches or eight inches down And then it will be you know, maybe every inch after that But I'm going to give you full dimensions on how I shaping them. I'm going to show you how I'm actually doing it um, I built a jig we're going to router them, but again, I'm going to kind of show you how I did that. But I'm going to go step by step. Uh, if you guys have watched my coyote building, coyote stretcher building video, these are built basically the same. Uh, the measurements are a bit different, obviously, because a fox compared to a coyote. Uh, so my bottom boards, the measurements are a little bit different because I don't need to open quite as wide for a fox as I do like a coyote. Um, so yeah, we're going to just kind of get right into it, I guess. Um, flip you around here. So what I have here is... This is what my current stretchers are. Um, obviously, you know, it's, this is only half of it. We well, can see how wide it is. This is what the shape of my new sh my stretchers are going to be minus this block. This is my router jig. So I have this little block on there so when I'm using a follower bit, it will follow along and I can follow across the top to kind of make sure I go straight off the end and don't like gouge back and mess up the tip. Because the tip of the thing uh, is very important on how the thing opens and shuts all the time. But you can see there's a quite a bit different. I mean, like in this area here, I'm taking off like better than a half an inch. And we'll lay one on top of the other so you can kind of see, you know, how much I'm taking off there. You know, it's a fairly substantial amount. I mean, just you're better than half a knuckle, like I said. So like this whole area, I'm going to be taking off almost a full half an inch. Um right here it's about even and then i'm going to be taking a little bit out of like this area not much in the shoulder area um but yeah so that's kind of so i had three already pre-built so there's six boards here like i said i built this jig the difference is this has nice sharp corners where these have a little bit of rounded corners so this i i'm literally is going to be my template I'm not going to tear this apart and actually make one out of it. I'm going to save the template in case I ever need to build any more or want to build any more of them. I have a template to do it. All right, to start out, what I use is a select pine board. You know, different guys say you need basswood stretchers and everything else. I just use, it's a one by four. So it ends up being three quarters of an inch wide by three and a half wide is what I start with. I buy six foot long ones. I actually cut them off and I have, I flipped it over. I actually marked it here. This is five feet from that end. So I actually only make my fox stretchers roughly five feet. Um, you can make them six foot long. It's gonna mess with the, how the adjustment works a little bit at the bottom. I like them five foot because they're way easier to move around in my basement when I'm putting fur on and off of them. Um, you know, I only have seven foot ceilings in my basement. So having a six foot thing and trying to carry it around, you know, I bang them into the four joists and whatever. Having it five foot makes it very easy to move around in my house, you know, when I'm actually working, putting fur up. And the fox typically, I mean, I don't know the exact measurement, but the body is only roughly about three feet. You know, I don't know, roughly, and then you got a tail hanging down. So I basically just don't want the tail, like, hitting the floor, essentially. And I don't have any issue with these doing that. Um, again, I don't know the exact measurement where the butt ends up being, but you get the idea. If it's, you know, 36, 40 inches, something like that, the tail, you know, is only going to be roughly this long, you know, and I'm still not touching the floor. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut all... 
all these off. So I'm actually going to build three more fox stretchers. Because if you guys watched my uh, Out on the Line series last year, I ended up catching 16 fox, only having three uh, stretchers to put them up. You know, it took me a long time to get them all actually put up because I only could do three at a time. So we're going to build three more brand new ones. So I'm going to have six stretchers. Um, again, so hopefully I can kind of keep up with them. I had trouble with fr fox freezer burden on me. So by able to, by being able to put up six at a time, hopefully I can somewhat put them up as I catch them. Probably won't happen at the beginning of the season, but towards the end, hopefully I'll be able to keep up with, you know, putting them up the same day I catch them, you know, and having enough boards to actually do that. Uh, so I have that board there. This one is, I have it marked. These two I actually have cut off, so I actually cut a foot off of them already. And then I have three more standing here that are all marked down here in the bottom that cut a foot off. So I'm going to do that. I have a chop saw set up right here um, and some box just to kind of support my board. So I'm going to cut these other four off at five foot long, and then we'll turn you guys back on. All right, guys, so I have all of them cut off. I got one right here. There's one right there, um, three are sitting here, and one right here. Uh, what I did is I took one of the foot long boards that I just trimmed off the top, and I set it up as a fence on my bandsaw. I don't have the fence for my bandsaw, and I also am not good at running a scale saw and keeping it cut and straight. So I'm actually going to do, um, for a fox stretcher, they don't need to be three and a half inches wide on each side. They only need to be two and three quarters. So what I did is I actually took my uh, jig there and I just sat it down here and then I clamped this down, you know, with my jig touching the saw. And I then I actually measured from here to my blade to make sure it was at two and three quarters inch. So what I'm going to do, and I'm not going to do it because it's going to on video here, but it's going to because it's going to be loud. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use one hand to just kind of push like out here to push it tight to my fence that way. And then my backhand back here behind you is going to guide the thing, you know, this direction. And just because you can kind of see like, oh, I'm not running straight or I'm not running straight. So I want to be running basically just like that. I'm going to turn my bands on. I'm just going to slowly feed them all the way through. And I'm going to rip all six of these down to two and three quarters inches wide using my bandsaw here. Like I said, I'm not good. This has given me really nice straight edges in the past. So I know that my uh, faces are going to be nice and straight. So we're going to do this for all six of them. And then we'll turn you guys back on again. Uh, before I start ripping these down, there was one more thing I was going to mention to you. Um, so I did several things before I turned you guys on the last time. I actually inspected each one of these boards. You know, I inspected the entire edge on both sides because if there's like a knot or something on the edge of it I'm cutting off um, three quarters of an inch roughly off of them you know I could cut the knot side off I'm also kind of keeping in mind that you know I'm going to trim the head end trim down so if there was something like out in here on one end or the other you know I just set that as being my head end of my thing I buy select pine so you spend a lot more money for the actual board itself but you look at these boards, there's no knots in them. And they've been sitting in my garage, weighing right here, most of the summer, you know, and it's not shut up or, I mean, the door shuts, but it's not insulated or anything like that. So, you know, they're out in the humidity. They're still weighing perfectly flat, you know, on each other. They're not all twisted. They're not all warped, anything like that. By buying a little bit better board, I don't have to worry about them hopefully warping as bad. I mean, especially like I said, once you start putting fur on them and everything, you know, so they start getting pulled on and wet, you know, from the fur or anything like that, I know they're going to stay fairly straight. So by buying the select, the top quality boards is going to save me dividends here in the long run um, by making sure they stay straight. Um, so again, I already went through, none of them have any defects that I could find. So I don't really have to watch how I'm pushing them through my saw. I can push them through either way and they're going to work out fine that way. 
But yeah, I just wanted to make a point of that. Like I said, if you buy a little bit co lower quality boards that have some knots and stuff, you got to be a little more careful where you what you trim off. You know, you can try and trim off some of the knots or bad spots. You know, or if the edge of your board isn't nice and square, you know, you can trim that part of it off. Um, I like to make sure on the inside where your two boards are going to be touching each other that that face is perfectly flat so they lay nice and tight to each other and it shuts up nice and tight so you can get your fur on, on and off. All right, I'm going to just deburr these just a, a smidge and then we'll be off to the races trimming these down. All right, guys, so what I did, I uh, run them all through, ripped them all down. So you'd see, you know, they're only two and three quarter. The pieces I trimmed off, I stood right over here. Now what I did is I took my uh, template I got and I put it on each one of them. And you can kind of see I tried to not go perfectly to the end because I want to actually router that off to make sure it's nice and, you know, matches my profile. And you can see I just took my pencil and I just drew along the edge of where my template's going to be. Or, you know, the shape of my thing's going to be. I don't want to... You could clamp this on and try and router that off. But I didn't have good luck doing that. So what, I, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this back on the bandsaw. I'm going to run all these through the bandsaw again. And I'm going to cut about an eighth of an inch or so away from my line. I don't want to be anywhere as close to it. So I'm going to cut... You know, for, start in here. I won't really cut too much on the nose. And just run like, you know, along here, around, and then out. Then when I'm routering, if your router bit is only taking like half a cut, it seems to cut significantly better. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut all the excess off, you know, the main chunk of the excess off of all six of these. You know, just using the bandsaw. I don't, I don't really care how accurate it is, just as long as I don't go past my line. You know, I want to, like I said, stay out like a good eighth of an inch. Because with a good router bit and a good router, it'll hog that right off nice and smooth. It'll be perfectly smooth. Um, the edges that I sawed, you know, are a little bit rough. Oh, so I lined it up with the factory edge of my board. So I want factory edge to factory edge when I'm, uh, you know, done with my stretcher. So the sod edge that I just ripped off is this edge out here. Um, it's fairly smooth. I don't know, it's kind of tough. You can see there are a few ripples in there. Uh, what you can do is just take a sander, a belt sander or anything else, and just kind of run it along. One good pass, and it'll smooth all that off. Um, I will do that after I get this cut off. Um and then I'll worry about sanding those flat. I'm not too worried about it. That could be basically right at the end. I'm going to router the shape. Then I'm going to go back and I'm going to clamp both halves of each stretcher together. And that's why I have this on here. And I'll show you what that's for at to, when I get that far. But then I'm going to put, like right now I got my quarter radius bit in there. And then I will radius that entire edge all the way from the very end all the way around and then around the other board going all the way down to the end. So I will do that with all of them, with basically match them up with a set. Even my old ones that I already had done, I basically just took a sander and like sanded the edge around them, which worked perfectly fine, but it's not a real even edge. So I'm actually going to do the same thing with all the old ones I have as well. I'm going to router quarter inch round both the top and bottom all the way around the both of them. Um, I was just looking to see if I had a coyote one like that out here. Yeah. So this is a coyote board I already have done. I just haven't put it back together. So I hope you guys got it. So what I did is I took that quarter inch router bit and rounded that with a quarter inch and this edge with a quarter inch. You can kind of see how, what it looks like on the end there. And I did that with both halves of these clamped together. Or I had them basically... And get some, get them way in here. So I basically had them sitting on my table just like that. I mean, obviously with them lined up. And then I went, when I routered, I went right around the end and kept going. That way this corner lines up really nice. You know, both of them are radius at the same amount. All right, so I'm gonna get at this. I'm gonna trim 
you know the most majority of this extra material off with a bandsaw on all six of these and then we'll turn you guys back on all right so i'm uh, on to the next step here so i have all my uh boards you can see i i stayed away from my uh mark there you know just so i don't have quite so much i mean obviously i have a little more on the end but it's a little tougher to you know cut that radius with this bandsaw you know and you end up with a piece like this so i actually redid my uh template a little bit i took that little small board off of there and i just cut one of these i cut it out a little bit stapled it onto my jig and that gives me a little more of a straight edge here than what i had before you know to make sure when i go by i got a little bit to run my uh, bearing of my router on so again uh a router i actually got it hooked up so i can hook up to my shot back so it kind of helps keep some of the dust so it don't go everywhere unless that hose plugs um so what i have here i have a follower bit and it's one inch long bit with a bearing on there i also have one with the bearing on the bottom and then you're you know you would cut above it i actually like this version a little bit better the only thing you have to do is you have to make sure that you have you know it's spaced out so you're not routering into i'm just using this heavier board as a basically a bench for the lack of a better term um and then what i did is i actually screwed i lined this up flush you can see flush there and then i run a just a inch and a quarter sheetrock screw in there and that won't go all the way through but it goes through far enough and i you want to make sure that that's less than flush so it's down you, know, you can see it's recessed in there a little bit that way my router will go right over the top of that without uh, catching it and i did the same thing on this end i just run a screw in to hold it i noticed that my uh when i saw it it must have been just a touch wide so i'm actually going to probably router the whole edge but i'm not going to be taking too much off so it should go pretty quick um you can see where i just did just a little bit right here so basically i just got it running pushed it up till my bearing hits that and then start running and you can see i mean it looks like there's a little whip there but like there ain't even enough to catch my finger on there so it basically will router it perfectly flush to what my template is um so what i'm gonna do like i said i'm gonna just start and i'm gonna router each one of these so I'll router it to the profile and I'll router the side a little bit. Like I said, like this one has like maybe an eighth of an inch almost. I can't believe it that it ended up that much wider. Um, so I, you know, when I run a tape measure, some of them are a little bit closer. So my fence might, might have slid just a little on me, but it's not going to take long to run my router. And then it actually will be perfectly smooth. I won't have to worry about sanding any of it by routering it a little bit off the whole length of it. Uh, the only thing I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to router, you know, from probably here, the whole end, and then I'll have to move it so this part of it's sticking off of my table, and I can clamp down here, and then router the rest of it. You know, and uh, the way I have it clamped, I want to start over here and router this direction. So the way the router turns and the chips throw, that's the way you want to go. So... Again, I'll just turn on my shot back. I'm not going to do it while you guys are listening because, again, it's super loud with both of these going. But I'm going to have that running, my shot back, so it sucks some of the dust up and then run my router. And, again, it's just going to go zip. I'll move it. I'll zip the profile of it as long as I have it uh, screwed together. I'll unscrew the two screws, take the actual stretcher board off of there, grab another one, line it up, screw it down router it and i'll do that for all six of these and then i'll turn you guys back on once i get that done i mean we're getting very close to really having a, a somewhat functional uh stretcher all right so i had the first one routered here again what i did is i routered from about here to the whole profile around the end and then i turned it you know, and clamped it there, and then I actually had it clamped here. I just took my clamp off, and then I'd actually routed that whole face so you guys can see. You know, it's nice and flat. I ain't gonna sand, worry about sanding any of that, maybe just a touch here, but I won't sand anything now until I actually have the uh, 
uh, quarter inch radius is routed on both corners. And then I'll take the, a little sanding block or just a piece of sandpaper and lightly touch it is about all I'm going to have to do. So uh, we'll take the two screws out of here now, you know, here and here. We'll attach the next one and we'll just keep on routing. Like I said, well, it doesn't take long. Like I think I had you turned off 30 seconds, a minute at the most. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, make sure you guys are wearing eye and ear protection. It's loud and it throws a lot of crap in your face. So uh, I know you got ear protection. Some guys, you know, the old school guys probably can't hear very good to begin with because they haven't been wearing ear protection. So I wear ear protection even more in the lawn, everything. You know, my hearing, you know, is my life. So if I can't hear something, you know, it could be bad. So like I said, and then a router is by having this little block. I can router right up to it and then just keep going. My bearing on my uh, bit will run on this and it creates a nice, perfect edge there. It doesn't really uh, tear the end up or nothing like that. So, all right, we're ready to tear this one apart. And I'll get all these routered, you know, the profile routered, and then I'll turn you guys back on. All right, we're on to the next step here. So I got the profiles on every one of them routered. You know, the full sides if they needed it. You know, the full ends, including the old sets that I had. I'm um, like on the old one, you can see like it didn't, it cut a ways, then it didn't cut, then it cut a ways, then it didn't cut, and then it cut. So like right here, I sanded just a little bit to kind of smooth that edge out, you know, where it kind of transitioned from cutting to not. Um, like there you go, you know, you can see what it cut. Like here it didn't cut at all, you know, and then it only cut from to here. So on the old ones and like that, actually that bottom one, it only cut just the, the nose, you know, to actually adjust that profile in. Um, what I did is the new sets... I matched them up in pairs that, you know, where they seem to line up the best. They all actually wind up pretty even. Um, and I have the old ones lettered. So that's set B, set F, set A. I don't know why I went to F, but this is going to be set C. And then I'll label these, you know, D and E. The reason why that matters is the piece that goes on the bottom of these old ones, I lettered that to score correspond with the set that they go with. It, you know, so like the piece that, the slider piece that locks it from, you know, sets how far open it stays. I have them lettered as well to correspond with the ones that they go with. All right, in my router now, I put a quarter inch round over bit in there. Um, you can kind of see the profile that gets. So what I did is I just took one of the scrap pieces and I run it on there. It appears to be doing a pretty even radius. It could be down just a smidgen, but it's very tough to set in there, you know, to get this in and out set where you want it. Uh, I should have the other piece on there, you know, the plunger piece, and then I think I could set it a little more precisely, but I think that's going to be just fine. So we're going to go ahead and router this. So what I'm going to do, like I said, I'm actually, I got it screwed to this heavier oak board. You know, it's like a one by eight oak, so it's super heavy, super old. So I put two screws in here. The screws I was using, those holes are the same holes that I used to hold it to my pattern. So there's a hole there and a hole down right here. So I used those same holes and just screwed it down to my thing. Now this is where this here board comes into, into play. This is one of the foot long pieces off of one of the ones I already had cut off. The reason why this is important, when my router comes around, when I get up here, there's not a lot for my router, you know, for this part of the router to set on. Yeah, maybe I can even just show you. You know, as I'm coming up here and coming around, when you get to the very end, you know, it wants to tip that way. By having this board on there, it basically allows my router bit to go kind of in between the two of them and then back and around. You know, now I'd be going on the second board. So that's what this is for. It's basically just a support to hold my router level as I, you know, kind of get down, router this edge. It kind of holds it level as I start and go back this direction. You know, and like when I'm you know, running this way, you know, I'm kind of trying to keep my router flat on this face. But when I get up here, it wants to do this. 
So by having it on here, that sort of keeps it because then now I want to tip it towards me, you know, put the pressure kind of towards me to keep it running flat on this board as I go that way. What I'll do is I'll router all the way around this whole entire thing. I'll take, unscrew it. I'm going to flip it over, screw it back down to my board, and then I'll router basically the bottom edge that's, you know, the edge that's the bottom now will be the top, and then I'll router around that whole profile. So both edges, you know, both the top and the bottom edge will have a quarter inch radius all the way around. On all. So I'm going to do that to all these fox. I got six fox ones, and I actually got uh, one coyote one left to do that I didn't... Uh, didn't do when I had all the rest of them. I had a little issues with that one getting uh, it to fit right. So I uh, modified it a little bit, and now I'm going to router the edge again. All right. So I think that should explain what I'm going to do. Like I said, it's going to be just basically routering right now. Like I said, I'm going to start, router this whole side, flip it over, router that whole side, take this set off, put another set up here, router both sides of that one take it off do the next one and i'll just keep going until i'm done with all of them and then about the only thing i have left to do is on the very bottom the half of it that's going to adjust i sand the thickness down a little bit like on this board here so this is one of my older ones you see how the bottom is sanded and it's actually thin and that allows so when my piece is setting on here that this freely moves inside of it. And you only do that on one half of it. The hat, get it lined up with the right one. Because again, these are a match pair. Each one of these right now, I have them setting as the match pair. And then that one's the match pair. So I need to make sure, like I said, that's why I got them lettered. So I know that I'm keeping each set together when I router them. And then when I go to put them together, I know what each set is, so. All right, I think that's everything for now. Like I said, we're going to do a whole bunch of routering here again. And then we'll, when I get done with that, we'll turn you guys back on. All right, guys. So I talked about uh, having to sand the end of it down so the thing can slide. So all I do is I take a belt sander. I'll show you that in a second. And I just put it on here and I sand this down like a good sixteenth of an inch. You can kind of see how much I took off. You know, and I want to make sure that this is wide enough that when my piece is on there that it doesn't hit up in here. So this is probably two and a half inches, maybe three inches. I mean, you put that up to a finger, it's probably close to three inches. Back, it doesn't really matter. You could sand it that far up, but you just don't need to. Uh, you could kind of see this was one that I already had put together and I drew around where the piece was on there so I can locate it back on there pretty easily. But you can see, you know, I don't need it. Like up here, some of this probably isn't doing me any good. But I wanted to uh, make sure it was far enough. And I try to get that sanded as flat, as level here across as I can. You know, it's a little bit like this just because, you know, putting your sander on there, it's just how it sands it. So all the new ones, these three sets of new ones here, I'm going to take one board of each set and I'm going to sand it like that. So again, you only want to do one side. So this is the fixed side and then this is the side that adjusts back and forth. So that's why this only has one hole to hold it in there. And then these are the screw holes that hold the fixed end down. Um, so I'm going to do that now to these last three and I'm going to just kind of check those other three that I already had done. Uh, this is a coyote board, the last one I had to do. Uh, but we're going to get those three fox ones done and or get the bottom sanded, you know, on one half on one of the two boards for each set. And again, that's kind of why it's important to mark or that I think it's important to mark each set so I know that you know, which one sand it goes with one that's not type of deal. I don't want to sand them both because if you sand them both, when you screw this one on, it's going to be narrow and then this one's not going to want to slide because it's going to pinch down on this one as well. That's why you have to sand the, this one to make it slide. I tried leaving them stock and once in a while you can you can actually get one that will slide but boy, most of them, they pinch them down tight enough, you can't move the second board with if you don't sand it down a little bit. 
I prefer to have this a little bit loose. You know, I'd rather stay in too much than not enough. So, you know, I want this to basically free float fairly easy. You know, like you just bump it with your finger like that and I want it to move. So I sand probably, like I said, a good 16th of an inch off of that board. So I'm going to set up and I'm going to get these three done here. And then I think we should be done in the garage here. And then I'll get set up in the basement and kind of show you how I'm putting all these back together. All right, everyone. So I'm getting ready to actually uh, assemble these what i did is i took my uh two stretcher boards and i uh took just a sanding block you can use whatever you have even just a, a piece of sandpaper in your hand might work good too you know because you can kind of round the edge uh basically what i'm trying to get off of there is like let's see if i can get so you guys can see that so you see how it chatters in a few places, it seems like on these sloped faces, so here and up here, it chatters a little bit. So I just take that little, um, you know, the sanding block, and I just kind of basically just buff that off. So I did that with both of these boards here. Um, and then I took what a piece of leather here. So how I hold my nose together on my stretchers is a piece of leather. And then... It is, I don't know, roughly three inches long. And then I kind of clip the corners. So it's three inches long. I clip the corners a little bit. And then I'm using a metal thumbtack on the ends. And what I did is I actually used like a hole like this. And I laid my piece of leather over it. And then pushed my tack through. So my tack went through the leather real easily. This is the tacks I'm using. I actually don't have too many left. I only have about ten left. So... Uh, once in a while you'll break one like this one here I bent it over a couple different times and I can't get it bent back straight see how it's got that little kink in there and I can't get it back straight so I had to use a new one so what I do is I uh, push one side of this in so let's get back to the, this end here so what I do is I push one side in and then I pull it as absolutely tight as I can and I push it in a little with my finger and then I hammer it in with a hammer. Then I pull my leather around as tight as I possibly can get it and then start my tack on this side and push it in as far as I can to get my leather as tight as I can on the end of that thing. Because once it gets wet a little bit or whatever, it'll actually stretch a little bit more. So I'm trying to take as much of the stretch out as I can to reduce the amount of play I end up in the end. So once I get it started, I hammer that one in with the hammer as well. Then I take a staple gun. I got it, my staple gun right here. And I put two staples. I'm about a half an inch back to here, you know, from the end to here. And then I run two staples in there and I did two on this side. And then I hammer those in and it, so they kind of follow you know, the shape of my board. So I hammer them in as hard as I can with a hammer to make sure they kind of follow that curve. So that's how I hold the nose end of my stretcher together. Uh, the leather, I'm using just a old welding glove. And what I did is I actually cut the top part of the welding glove because you don't usually damage that part of the leather. Um, the bottom, I mean, you can see this pair of gloves is junk. So I just took the leather off of the top of it and then I cut strips. So I got a couple more here ready to go and this one's ready to go. So I just cut strips off of that piece of leather and I'll save these cause I still, you know, every now and then I break a leather and then I can just come and cut a new one off, clip the corners a little bit to make it, you know, the only reason why I clip the corners, you can kind of see how it kind of follows. Otherwise that corner seems like it kind of curls as it gets wet and dry, wet and dry. So by clipping them off a little bit, you know, it helps it just kind of seat underneath that rivet or the tack a little bit better. All right. So this, this is my adjustable piece on the bottom. So this is going to set on here, you know, obviously with them in between there. So we're going to give you the measurements for all that stuff. And I'll, I'll take a picture of this the best I can and I'll post it on there. All right, so 
Basically, I got figured out I roughly want about a quarter inch from the edge of my board to the edge of this piece when it's on there. And then on the top of it, I drill one hole here and two on this end. And then on the opposite end, I drill two holes on this end and a single hole on that end. And the holes are offset. So this one's roughly in the middle of my block in the middle. And then these two are, you know, roughly about three eighths to a half an inch in from each edge of it. So I have one screw running this way and then two running this way. And then I actually have the opposite on this end. So that's why like I have the dotted hole here and a dotted hole there and a dotted hole here. Those are the ones that are on the bottom side that are only on the bottom. This hole here and these two down here are only in the top board. And again, I'll quick go through the measurements here. So my first hole on the back side, so on the bottom side here is five eighths of an inch in. The one on the top of my board, this one's an inch and three eighths in. Again, I'll try to get some good pictures. I'll put them in here. The next one in on the bottom is two inches in from the end. This, this hole here is three and a half. This hole here is four and three eighths. Then four and three quarter and then five and an eighth. So these are only three eighths apart for adjustment. This is kind of my storage hole. This is how far I stretch my fox. And I never go any less than that. And I never go any more than this. Out of all the years I've been doing it, those are the three holes I've always used. You can add more holes as you want. On a fox, I, I try to go like three eighths hole spacing. On a coyote, I go like half between each one. You know, a fox isn't nearly as big and they can handle, you know, if you have like half inch in between, you know, you're good chance you probably should be some, maybe somewhere in between two holes. Well, this kind of compensates for that. All right, to the holes on the end down here. Uh, this hole here is seven and 13 sixteenths from this end. The far one is at eight and a half. That's this dimension. And then the one on the bottom down here is at eight and an eighth. Uh, my overall boards are, this board is nine inches. My little block in the middle is about an inch and five eighths. So I got two nine inch boards, an inch and five eighths board. Um, again, I don't drill these holes all the way through. You know, you could just put all these holes all the way through and then just put two screws one way, one the other. Um, I kind of like going two one way, one the other because I feel like it kind of locks everything down. You know, it's a little less chance that it's going to, you know, if you'll run them all the same way or only just did two down here, you know, the screws only part way in this one. You know, it's not all the way through, obviously. Uh, four screws. I'm using number six by two inch long Phillips sheetrock screws. So there you kind of see how far that's going through. So if I only put two going one way, you know, this, it wouldn't only be part way into that top board. So by putting one going the opposite way, make sure, you know, they're both going to stay on nice and tight. I haven't had any issues with these breaking or coming loose. Um, what I have figured out for this end, so I have this one sanded down, so that's my adjustable side. So just slide this on there, if I can. So it's going on this one real easy. I need to get it on the other one. All right, sorry about that. I had to set you down so I could use two hands. So you had, I had to kind of split this open in order to get this, it pushed onto here. So from my sketch there, I want about a quarter inch here to here, but I also, I want it basically on two and a half inches. So what I did is I marked from the end of my board over two and a half inches. So I want that about right there. All right. What I'm going to do, what I, the way I want them set up, I want about a quarter inch gap in here. And what that allows me for is if my boards ever warp a little bit, like where they're cut down up here, there's a chance they'll warp a little bit. 
this kind of keeps them from pinching. If you have it tight and they warp and say it, it hits here, it will actually start spreading the end open. You know, if this bows a little like that. So right now this can still bow and this gap kind of helps me compensate for that. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to uh, match drill this hole to this board and get it set. I have this set up roughly a half an inch. I like when my stretcher setting on the, you know, I usually just set them kind of like this when I have fur on them. So they're just setting on my floor down here. I like so the the stretcher boards themselves are what's hitting, setting on the ground, not my adjuster piece. So you can, I'd like to leave like a three eighths or half an inch here. And like I said, I'm going to match drill this hole here and then I'll use a nail. So I have like an eighth inch hole drilled in there and I'll drill another eighth inch hole into this board. And once I get that done, I'll turn you guys back on and I'll kind of show you what I, what else I do here. All right, guys. So I'm kind of to the next step here. What I did is I had that set up. I match drilled this hole through using an eighth inch drill bit. Then what I did is I actually took this piece off and then I just used a little square and I lined that up on the end of my board and then the edge centered on my hole and I drew a line. I flipped it over and I did the same thing on the other side. So I have a line on each side and then I put it back together, put my nail back in here. And then you can see uh, what I did is I took my pencil and I just drew a little line going this direction. So now like what that helps me do, especially when your leather stretches a little bit, if this thing moves a little this way or like that. Oh, darn it. I just moved it. I just moved this piece and I didn't want to. If this ends up moving in and out a little bit or, you know, gets loose because your leather on that end stretches a little bit, I know where my hole is at. Um, and then, so this is fairly important here. So I have it so it lines up here and I make sure that the end of my stretcher here is nice and square. You know, that one board isn't sticking longer than the other. And the way I figured out where that needed to be clamped Oh, I said now I moved it so it might be off because I want to slide that all the way open put my nail back in there and then I want to make sure that this end is still nice and square if it's not if this board is pushed out a little then I need to move this back and forth however I need to get it to get this lined up and I basically just keep retesting it you know, right now it actually looked really good, so I'm not going to move anything. But if it was off, I would adjust, adjust it a little bit to get it to work right. Then move it back over here. Put my nail back in. Make sure it's still lined up there, which it goes in nice and easy. And then move it back out here. Put my nail back in. And it goes in nice and easy. So that way then I know I got this right where I want it. And we're going to squeeze my clamp down a little tighter. And I already drilled it. So hopefully these line up. But what I did is I have about a 16th inch diameter drill bit. And I drilled. Oh, that's something I was going to mention too. So the three on the end and the three on this end. There's one on the top and two on the bottom. And there's one more in the bottom here. I drilled with just a 16th inch drill bit. These ones in the middle I drilled with eighth inch drill bit. These are so they can clear nail. This is just a clearance hole for these screws and I basically don't want it any bigger than like the shaft of my screw. That way your screw is going to hold tight but yet it's not going to split your board. That's what I'm trying to avoid there. So I took this drill bit and I drilled this one and I actually drilled the end one over here from the underside. This one here, this is setting on over one of the holes. So what I'm going to do and hopefully this will all line up now that things moved. So I just put my screw in. I'm going to slide my whole thing onto my table a little more. So I'm pushing on my table and not off the end of it so far. Okay. That one's cinched up nice and tight. Flip it over. Like I said, this is the one I'm worried about not being lined up if it, if it did move. But I 
feel like I got it back. Nope, it went right in. So I also like to make sure I get them just so they're just below flush. I don't want them sticking out at all. So now I'll take this guy off. And I'll take my 16th inch drill bit. I'm not going to do it on camera here because I don't, you guys don't need to watch that. But I'll take this and I'll drill it down through just so it goes through this board. And if it's everything's lined up, the holes I drilled at the you know, when I was making these pieces, this should go right into that other hole and I'll know I'm through. So I'm basically just drilling a hole through this so this board does, doesn't split when I run the screw in there. And that's essentially it. This stretcher is 100% done. Um, if you guys want to, you can measure from the nose down and mark the sizes on there. On my older ones, I actually had the size marked on there. Um, I'm not going to put it on there. Typically, my Fox are actually, my Fox are always longer than that. Usually, my butt, you can see, are way down here on them. So, I mean, I'm four inches past the size on there. And it's not like on canines in particular you can't really stretch them this is not a stretcher it's more just a form for your animals so you're not like pulling them on there you're literally just getting them on there so they're you know setting at a comfortable tight tautness and then pinning them on they will shrink a little as they dry so you don't want them too tight by letting them shrink it actually makes your fur a little bit denser you know because obviously if the fur or the skin shrinks all those hairs move closer together and it makes your fur a little more dense. So like I said, I'm not pulling them on there and reefing them down tight to, and then pinning them. I'm basically just getting them wherever they set comfortably and pinning them on. Um, yeah, other than that, like I said, I think that's about it for these. I'm going to go through um, and I will basically give you measurements every half an inch down all the way to probably here someplace. And then from here to here, it's the same. So but there's a stretch that it's the same width. And then I'll give you a few measurements for that slope. Um, and then down. And I'll put up a little uh, chart at the end what all those measurements are. So starting at a half an inch from the nose, what the width is, an inch down, inch and a half, and so on. And I will give you, put a little chart at the end of my video that lets you know how to get that shape. You know, and you can kind of see, I kind of make sure my nose is a little more pointy than what you would almost think. But you got to remember, like an actual fox, you know, their nose is real slender. I mean, you kind of look at the nose of that. And if you look at a fox, their nose is fairly slender. And then about by the eyes, their head winds out. Um, I just kind of funny these look like the eyes, but it just ended up, these were the holes I used to screw my thing down so I could router them. Uh, the only thing, like these... You may end up with your ears pinning into some of these holes. If that happens, just move your pin a little one way or the other. Your ears, the way the ears are pinned down don't really matter all that much. Um, but again, by having it... Oh, that's one last thing I'm going to show you here. And like I said, at the end of this video, I'll put a chart that will show you what the exact width of my board is all the way down. And then from, I don't know, roughly here down it's the same length they're the same width it's two and three quarters inches wide so some guys wanted to know this so my stretcher when it's all the way open is about seven and three eighths wide roughly oops sorry it's about seven and three eighths But you got to remember that my fox is not pulled all the way to the end. Typically, like I said, my fox are only to here, which on this stretcher would be, you know, probably about in this area. So I'm roughly the widest I'm ever stretching one of my fox is, you know, maybe six and three quarter at the bottom of it. I don't know what NAFA standards were or FHA standards are. But that's what I feel like my fox look the nicest at. Typically, I'm only, I ever use the middle hole here. You know, and I added one size a little bigger because if you get one really big fox, it may matter. And I have the closest one. If you end up getting like a real small pup, you might need one size smaller. So in the typical hole, the end of my stretcher here is at about 7 inches. Which should be right because I have every three eighths of an inch. But again, where my actual 
animal is going to be is that up here and you're at like six and a half. So it's not that much difference up here, you know, the adjustment you have down here. But again, my fox typically are fairly long and slender. I don't need to like spread them way open. You know, if you're up in say Alaska or something like that, where you're getting, you know, fox that are size of coyote pups, you may need to have more adjustment holes and you'll have to lengthen everything out. You know, lengthen your top and bottom board out accordingly. You know, so if you need an extra three ace hole here, you need to add onto your board. This is what works for me. I trap in uh, West Central Minnesota. So I'm trapping prairie fox. This is the size of board that works very well for my fox. Like I said, I very rarely ever use the biggest size on there. And like I said, I'm not trying to like reef them tight. Basically to have it split is only, the reason for using a split stretcher like this is so I can narrow it up and pull my animal off. You know, instead of, instead of need, needing to use belly boards. So there's no belly boards used at all with this style of design because you just slide it in. You, you adjust it to the narrowest spot. I typically put my nail back in there. Part of two, by having this knot tight together, it won't pinch your fur in between your boards when you're trying to slide it off. All right, everyone. So we're going to give you a little bit of look at the stretcher here with an actual animal on there. Um, this fox is dry. He's ready to come off. I'm actually just going to take him off as soon as I'm done videoing here. But I wanted to show you a little kind of the modifications I made to my stretcher and what that looks like with the actual animal on there. So you can kind of see like the little cut that I have in my stretcher ends up being about right by the eyes, which is typically like where the head of the animal actually opens up anyway. And then you can kind of see like on this side of him that the actual whips actually curl around my stretcher nicely now. Um, I maybe cut, when I trimmed the bottom whip off, I maybe cut a little more than I should have off of here, but you can see how it actually curls around my board a lot nicer, you know, by having, you know, the profile the way I do. Um, and then I'm going to give you some measurements on the bottom. So I've had people question me on how wide I'm stretching my animals, but like, you know, this isn't a huge fox by any means, but... I don't think I want to stretch him any wider than I have him. I'm going to throw him up here on the table here. So I'm going to give you some measurements of this guy. So you can see I have my uh, stretcher in the middle hole, which is almost always the hole I use. If I get a really, really big fox or a fat fox, then I use the next one. If I get a real small pup, then I use this inside one. But be, um, I think... Every fox I did this year was all on that middle hole. So we're going to give you some measurements here. Just so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. So right now the bottom of my stretcher is at 7 inches. So I'm hooked on that side. But at the base of my fox, I'm at probably 6.5 or just a little less. So I don't know what the actual... You know, FA, FHA size regulations are supposed to be, or not the regulations, but the suggestions. But this is what my fox ends up being. You know, if he was down a little bit more, he'd be just a touch wider. But obviously, you know, from probably here down, they really don't increase. I mean, because from here to here is like two feet and it gains a half an inch, right? So from here to here, it's maybe you know, three eighths of an inch wider here than it is here. Well, typically this is like the front shoulders of the animal. Well, like right here would be, you know, so from their body is going to be roughly the same size all the way down, right? So like I said, I don't know what it's actually like according to FHA sizes, what that's supposed to be in width. This is the size like, a, you know, he's tight on there. But he's not like super stretched because I don't want to be stretching them. You know, you don't really want to ever stretch an animal. You just want to have them snug on your uh, stretcher. And again, they're not even really necessarily a stretcher. They're more of a form than they are an actual stretcher. But see, I just wanted to give you a little bit of look on how that the end of the, uh, 
and the nose fits around my uh, stretcher way way nicer to me it gives the, the animal a little bit more natural looking because that you know like a fox has kind of a long pointy nose or not long but you know more of a pointy nose he doesn't have a real fat wide nose and really neither do coyotes but so like I said the what my board basically goes back and then it starts widening out you know until it gets to the shoulders and then it goes back so about where the eyes are is where it starts to widen out which if you actually look at an animal before you skin them that's basically how they look but by having my board shaped the way I do I didn't have any trouble with the fox like the noses wanted to keep slipping off of them before when I had my nose wider you know because this part was laying flat there really wasn't nothing like squeezing it to actually hold it up on there so I was having to pin my nose but my new stretchers I didn't have to do that at all so worked out really nice like I said we're gonna I mean this isn't the greatest quality fox in the world he's just a semi heavy he'll look a little nicer when I get him off the board and get him fluffed up a little bit but all right I think the only last thing is we're gonna show you the dimensions of my uh, template at the end of the video here. All right, I think that's everything I have. I, again, I appreciate you guys watching. Um, I'll be putting again like the measurements for all this. I'll put a little chart up at the end. Um, just go ahead and either pause the video. Or I'm gonna leave it up there for a bit so you guys can have time to kind of write the numbers down. Again, pause the video and you can uh, write them. I actually, if I was going to do it, I'd just take a picture of it with my phone, take a picture of your computer screen, you know, so you have it right on your phone and you can uh, go ahead off there. And I'll also put a picture of these measurements. I'll try to get in some better lighting that's not quite so bright or I'll ha write these again on, on something a little queer, bigger, bolder so you guys can see what all the measurements are. All right, I think I've talked enough, like I said. So we got, I redid the whole profile of my nose. All right, thanks for watching Schmatz Outdoors. I appreciate you watching. If you have any questions on the measurements of anything I have here, anything like that, just go ahead and leave them in the comments and I'll try to answer them down there. Uh, if I really miss something, like I said, I'll take another little short video and do an update to this. But otherwise, thanks for watching. See you on the next one. All right, guys, so I have my stretcher marked off. I'm kind of going to go over what all the lines are, and then you can go by the chart to see what the measurements are. So I got every half an inch all the way up to 6 inches, and then every inch all the way out to 14 inches. So from here to the end, it's the same width. And then you can kind of see basically there's a little bit of a radius. It runs basically straight. Kind of right in here there's a little radius. From eight inches up to about five and a half, it's actually fairly straight along that edge. It basically is straight. And it's the same width all the way along. It's about five or one in, it's just over an inch and a half. So it's a 30 second over inch and a half from five and a half out to eight inches. It basically runs straight. Then you got the radius kind of between eight and nine, and then it kind of runs uphill. And then you got kind of the radius between 12 and 14. And then up here, you can kind of see, so I give measurements for each one of these. So kind of at three and or between two and a half and three is kind of where the radius is here again. And then it runs fairly straight again between two and a half and basically an inch. It runs fairly straight. And then you got the nice rounded edge on there. You know, so I only give measurements at half and one, but you can kind of see the radius that I have. So it's kind of like a complete radius between the point and one inch. All right, so I kind of hope that helps clarify the uh, uh, measurements on the chart, kind of the profile I ended up with. So what I would do is put marks at each one of these, and then you can kind of draw in what that profile might like or might be. If you don't like it, erase it and kind of draw it back in there again. But again, you can kind of see... Go slow so you guys can kind of see the, I wrote the inches right here. So here's six, and then I went every two. So there's 10, 12, and 14. And again, from here on, it's the same width.
So I hope that helps kind of clarify the chart a little bit of what the measurements are and why some of the numbers are the same from one measurement to the next.